Copenhagen is like many European cities, where a weekend may be enough to give you a sense of what a place is about. But what happens if you only have a morning to explore this beautiful city? What should you do in Copenhagen, Denmark? Is it even worth leaving the hotel? Join us as we share everything we manage to see in a morning in Copenhagen. After a wonderful trip to Sweden, where we got to visit Swedish Lapland and Stockholm, we headed back to San Francisco via way of Copenhagen, where we had less than 24 hours before jumping on our connecting flight. We arrived very late on Saturday evening, so after arriving at our hotel, we quickly went to bed so we could wake up very early the following morning. Thankfully, we booked a hotel in the heart of the city center to easily access the popular spots. The following morning, we raced down to reception, asked for a late checkout, and rented bikes from the hotel. The process was easy and the bikes all come with locks and very simple gears. Copenhagen is a city designed for cyclists. With an extensive network of bike lanes and a relaxed pace of life, it's the perfect place to explore on two wheels. And most importantly, for those that are a little less fit than they would like to be, the city is very flat and very easy to cycle on. What are we doing? Cycling in, in Copenhagen! <laughs> As we cycled through the empty streets, we headed to Newhound, where we hope to catch the morning sunrise. You may not know the name, but you will immediately recognize this picturesque harbor with its colorful waterfront and iconic buildings of townhouses, restaurants, bars, and cafes. While we enjoy the quiet time and the beauty of this tourist attraction, we can only imagine how busy this gets in the summer evenings. The quiet morning calm, however, was the perfect way to kick off our day. Adrian was really excited to start exploring and he wasn't even listening to what I was saying. Cycling through this charming city, which effortlessly blends charming historic sites with a modern innovative vibe allows you to truly appreciate the city. Cycling, like walking in a new place, allows you to soak up the sights, sounds, and smells that can oftentimes be missed if you are traveling by public transport or by taxi. Next, we headed to Christiansborg Palace and were fortunate enough to catch the changing of the guards. What an amazing experience to be able to see this, so up close and with no crowds. This was certainly a lot more intimate than what we have seen in London and even in Stockholm. Directly opposite is Frederick's Church which is commonly called the Marble Church due to its Rococo architecture. It is an absolutely beautiful place of architecture and forms the focal point of the Frederikstaden district. I just want to take a moment to thank everyone who has subscribed to our channel. It means so much to us that you enjoy our content and that we are able to provide helpful tips and travel inspiration. For those that haven't subscribed and are craving some wanderlust, hit subscribe for travel inspirations you won't want to miss. We'd love to share our travels and inspirations with you. We jumped back on our bikes and headed to Castellet, which is a citadel. It is arguably the best preserved fortress in Northern Europe. It is still in use today by the Danish military, which is why we became very nervous as we got close. But thankfully, some people ahead of us entered first, so we felt comfortable knowing we could enter. The citadel was built in the 17th century by Christian IV, King of Denmark, to protect the city from attack. It had been used as a barracks, prison, and military hospital. Today, it is a popular tourist destination and is open to the public for free. Surrounding it is a great walking trail, which was in use by a number of runners. 
It's in this area too that you will find the statue of the Little Mermaid located on a rock at the Langelini Promenade. It is based on a fairy tale by the famous Danish author Hans Christian Andersen. As you might imagine, this area is famous for its war memorials and is home to the Museum of Danish Resistance. This is definitely one of those museums I wish we had more time to explore. We decided to follow the locals and stopped for a coffee and a pastry at our favorite coffee chain, Espresso House. As we sat enjoying the fresh air and thinking about our amazing trip, we just sat down, enjoyed our snack, and the glorious sunshine. As we got back on our bikes for our last trip before returning to the hotel, we went around to cycle the different neighborhoods to enjoy the beautiful streets of Copenhagen on this tranquil morning. One of the things we noticed during our short stay here in Copenhagen is that the things we had to pay for were more expensive here than in Sweden or Norway. Denmark, like many of its neighboring Scandinavian countries, has a high cost of living. And Denmark in particular has a strong currency compared to many other currencies. Feeling full of both food and gratitude for a short trip, we headed back to the airport and the long flight back home awaited us. So, the question is whether a morning was enough to enjoy Copenhagen. Mm, yes and no. We would have loved to have spent more time exploring the museums, tasting the local food, and visiting surrounding areas. But we managed to see so much that it probably is off the list of the immediate places we want to see. Thanks for joining us. If you are dreaming of your next getaway, we've got some fantastic experiences and must-see destinations to fuel your travel dreams coming up. Hit subscribe now to be inspired. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring. Thanks again for watching and we can't wait to see you soon.